Hello everybody, this is Benny from Kami Cosplay, long time no see. Today I quickly wanted to show you how we use CGI or computer generated imagery to create fake environments and backgrounds for our cosplay photos. And what do I mean by fake environments? Well, just take a look at this photo here from my Gotham Knights cosplay photo shoot. Yep, that's not a real church, just a gray wallpaper. And the same goes for Svetlana's Genshin photo shoot here. Again, no real Lever Harbor, just a green screen. So that's pretty exciting, right? But now you might ask, why go through all the trouble of creating a fake environment on a computer when you can just go outside to a real location and take photos there? And I mean, you're not wrong, we live in the south of Germany and we have a lot of castles and lakes and forests all around us. And these are all perfectly fine backgrounds for photos from Monster Hunter or Horizon Zero Dawn or Diablo. But if we need a desert, like last year when we wanted to shoot Svetlana's Valkyrie costume from Raid Shadow Legends, we had to get creative. There's no desert near Germany anywhere, especially not in winter. Fortunately, all we needed to create some fake digital sand dunes was a gray wallpaper and a 3D modeling software Blender. So let me show you how that's done. Okay, so first I needed a photo of Svetlana in her Valkyrie costume. Since we had nothing else available, I placed her in front of a grey wallpaper and set up some bright lights around her. I didn't actually follow any specific lighting setup, but just basically wanted to make sure she was well lit from every side. Then we took plenty of different photos in some epic looking battle poses. Once done, I browsed through all the different pictures in Adobe Bridge, highlighted my favorites and finally let Svetlana chose the one she liked the most. I opened this one up in Photoshop, did some basic color correction and retouched a couple of spots here and there, nothing fancy really. After that I selected the pen tool and isolated Svetlana from the grey background click by click. I made sure to always draw a couple of pixels inside the shape and just went roughly around the fur and hair parts. These could be fixed later. Photoshop actually offers a couple of automated selection tools, but I'm old school and like doing it manually. It takes a while, but it will look a lot better. Once completed, I selected my outline, created a layer mask, added a solid color to the background, opened the select and mask option and in there used the refine edge tool here to fix the fur trims. Easy peasy. After everything was done, I just needed to save the image as a transparent PNG file. You don't have to use Photoshop to do these steps, by the way. Any other free image software just like GIMP or Inkscape can do the same. So just use whatever you're most comfortable with. Anyway, now that my image was done, I could finally import it into Blender and start building my environment. If you don't know what Blender is, by the way, it is an awesome 3D modeling software you can download for free. Just check out my starter tutorial video here or behind the link in the description. Now, first I moved the cube out of the way and imported my PNG image as a plane. There's a simple plugin to do that which you can find here by the way. To see the photo instead of a grey wall, just click on the material preview mode. Now that's better. Next I had to make sure the image had the correct real life dimensions. For this I could just set the cube to Svetlana's height, which is 1.75 meters. I used this as my reference and roughly sized her up until it fit. Doesn't need to be super exact though. Since the Blender startup scene already comes with a camera, I then rotated my image 90 degrees and adjusted the camera to sit right in front of it. My goal here was basically to recreate the position of the camera to mimic my own position in relation to Svetlana when I took the original photo. For that I went to Output Properties and copied the pixel dimensions of my photo to my camera so they are the same. When you press 0 on your keyboard you can switch to Camera View. And then check the box for camera to view here to be able to move the camera around freely. After lining up the camera view to my image it looked like this. Nice. Then I clicked on my photo, went to constraints and added a child of constraint to my camera. This made it so that when I move the camera my image will always be attached to it. And since I took the photo from below I could now move it like this. Cool right? I also took the photo diagonally, so to position Svetlana back on the ground, I first added a floor and rotated the camera until she firmly stood in place again. So far so good. As you can see when I now add elements to my scene, the perspective still looks correct. With the lights turned on it looks even more realistic. But Svetlana's shadow still looks like a square. Well, to fix that, just go to the material properties, scroll down and set the shadows to alpha hashed. 
Moving the light now will create a proper shadow. Awesome, now let's get rid of all of that and save the file. Now that I have my scene all set up, I can finally start building the proper environment. And for that, I need assets. Assets are basically things like rock formations, trees, houses, mountains, and all of that good stuff. I need to build my environment out of something, and making all of these assets myself from scratch would take way too much time. Luckily, there are a ton of cool asset libraries on the internet, full of thousands of objects, textures, and sometimes even full environments. Basically everything I would ever need. I put a few links to the most popular libraries in the video description. My favorite is Quixel Megascan, so I will use this one for now. For a few dollars a month, you can set up a basic subscription that will grant you enough credits to build a simple scene. You can obviously also find a lot of free assets, but personally I much rather spend a bit of money to get the good stuff to work with. To get these assets into Blender, just download the Quixel Bridge, log in and set Blender as your export destination. There is a buttload of cool stuff here, from forests to city streets to snowy mountains. For my background though, I needed red sandstones and rocks. When you find something you like, just click download and then export it to bring it directly into your Blender scene. Pretty cool, right? Just search, choose and export your items from the asset browser directly into the scene and try to create your background as you want. To me this basically feels like a level editor in a video game. You can place rock formations, rotate them, scale them up and down and move them around until you feel like they look cool from your camera view. I used the high-res 8K versions for everything by the way, but if your computer is struggling, you can also choose the lower quality assets of course. Let's get some more stones and maybe a dead tree for the background next. You can have as much fun here as you want, just move things around, scale them up and down and always check your camera view, how it looks from your photo perspective. I also added a few swords and axes sticking out of the ground to look like a proper battlefield. Plus a few things in front to add more depth to my composition. Quixel also has grass and branches by the way, these add a lot of realism to your scenes. Okay, this was my scene so far, everything nicely organized in folders. Next I had to set my camera focus. You can do this in the camera properties under depth of field. Just set it to something similar of what your real camera had. My photo had an f-stop of 2.8, but 3.3 looked a bit better for the environment. In the focus distance, I made sure to line it up with Svetlana's feet. By the way, while using EB as your render engine is great for building levels, if you want to light them properly or render your final image, make sure to switch to cycles. While this mode is slower and looks a bit weird, it will produce a much better light and shadow quality. Just trust me on this. Look at the spot here for example, in Eevee it's completely black while Cycle still has a lot of detail in the shadows. Ok, now let's add some lights to the scene. For your finished picture to look real, it's very important that you try to emulate the same lighting setup that you used in your photo shoot. I started with an orange light from the right just to make sure it would match with my photo, but for the rest I honestly just tried a few things out and made sure the scene looked fitting to my photo. Our eyes can be tricked pretty easily, so as long as it fits your photo somewhat, it should be good. If you don't know at all how to work with lights in Blender yet, YouTube is your friend. Just search for Blender Lights Tutorial and 15 minutes later you will know what to do. That's how I learn as well. Ok, the scene is complete, that wasn't so bad, right? Now it's time to render everything in the best quality and then put it back into Photoshop and bring it all together. To render your background only, make sure to deactivate the rendering of your photo by clicking this little icon here. There are also a few settings you can play with to drastically reduce your rendering time, like increasing the noise threshold, reducing the light path bounces and turning on fast GI approximation. After that, just click on render and wait for the image to be processed. Depending on your computer, generating this image may take a while. This one for example took 3.43 minutes, which is actually pretty good. I saved the image and then rendered out the mountain range separately. I wanted these mountains to be a bit more foggy in the distance, but since I don't know how to do this in Blender yet, I would just do it in Photoshop. Rendering those images in high quality can take quite a while based on how powerful your computer is. If you're struggling here, just go on YouTube and search for tutorials to help you reduce your render time. That's the same what I did as well. But now let's jump into Photoshop. As you can see, I imported the rendered images and then placed them into individual layers. 
already looks really cool, but without any shadows around Svetlana's feet, it feels a bit off. Since I took the original photo on a grey wallpaper though, I could actually just select the shadow from the photo, cut it out and add it back in as a multiply layer. A few brightness adjustments later and bam, convincing shadow. Actually makes a big difference, right? Okay, next I went to the Pexels website and found a cool sandy background that I would use to fill out the empty space in the back. As well as some cool dramatic clouds which I could then stitch together. I just rotated it a tiny bit, made it blurry, masked it off and added the clouds above and told Photoshop to fill in more clouds for me procedurally. Then I just desaturated the mountains, moved some foreground objects around a bit, added a few color gradient effects, as well as a few bokeh lens flares and flying ambers. Adding these is always a good idea. And done! Voila! I think this turned out pretty good. Here you can see the difference again between the original photo and the CGI background. Original photo, CGI background. Looks like a desert, right? And that's even though we took this photo in the middle of winter in Germany. So that's how we use Blender to create fake environments for our cosplay photos. I think the finished image is pretty convincing, even though I think a trained eye will probably spot that this is CGI by closer inspection, but for an Instagram post that's totally fine. You can do so much with this technique and the possibilities are endless. My brother Jacob actually made a separate level design based on the same Quixel Megascans library on the same photo set, but the photos still came out differently and that's pretty cool I think. Anyway, I hope this video was fun to watch and maybe inspired you to try this out as well. It's really a lot of fun to play around with. If you want to learn more about cosplay photography, check out our book on cosplay photography on kamuicosplay.com or write me a comment down below if you have more questions or recommendations of what I should try out next. There's also a very different approach to this whole CGI background thing involving Unreal Engine 5, but I still have to dig myself deeper into that hole before I have enough knowledge to feel comfortable enough to make a video about it, so this will still take a while. Anyway, I really appreciate you watching this, even though it was a very technical video again. But if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Thanks again for watching and see you next time, bye bye! As always, huge thanks go out to our Patreons and especially our Super Patreons. And these are Ethan Makes, Blake Roberts, Backslash Cosplay, Niff, Louisa Paris and Roar. Thank you very much and bye bye.